We've got a handbrake return spring with a different hooks at each ends. One is a semi-circled hook, the other is U-shaped hook. Firstly we need to grease it. Once done, place it down horizontally, with the semi-circled hooks end facing the hole inside the pin here. And now we should be able to hook it, without making a much effort. So, the spring is hooked. Then, we take this part and connect it together. Done. And we're getting something like this. Our next step is to deal with the spring again. Note, how well this semi-circled hook got through. So, the U-shaped hook here, has to grab this bar here. However, before doing that, a protection cover needs to be installed first as it needs to go through the hole in here. Place the protection cover down, but in a way, so that the spring was peeking out like this. And then, let the other part put down. And look, the U-shaped hook here is almost where we need it. Let's make it grab the bar. And thus, we get it done. Some extra grease for it. And a bit for the thread here as well. Next, we got to attach couple more items. It is handbrake pawl, pawl tension spring and anchor pin. All these details must be greased before installation. Now about the anchor pin. It has a hole intended for springs hooking. You can see it here. So, we've got to insert it in this hole here. Push it through and leave it like this. Take the tension spring and hook the anchor pin's hole with it. Once done, don't release it just yet, because we need to connect it with handbrake Paul. Connect Paul with the tension spring you're holding, and then start lowering it. Here are the two metal buttons which will hold our Paul. So, we need to bring this Paul a little bit further. In order to let these buttons grab a hold of the holes. It will be little hard to stretch the spring without the help of tool. Therefore, we use a screwdriver. So here's our assembly result. It's best to add more of grease. So that the mechanism and its components stayed out of corrosion on occasions, when water or condensation have their way to there. Well, these amount of grease should be enough. Next on our list is a ratchet, an automatic handbrake adjuster. The second of its part is a friction spring which holds it. 
So these two metal arc grips should grab the ratchet in this way. The other two grips are a straight ones. And they need to go in here. But pay attention, both holes must align one with another. Now we need to grease the details, put them back together, and install it on place. When installing ratchet with spring, the pull from sideways will interfere to us by pushing the ratchet away. So, try to push on ratchet straight down. And using screwdriver to push two of friction spring grips to make it enter the slit. Here is the result. Finish it by adding extra grease. Now close it with a lid. The lid also has two holes for hinge pin. So we place it down like this, letting two of its grips get a hold of the detail beneath and attempt to screw in a bolt. The bolt also needs to be lubricated otherwise it will be hard to unscrew it decades later. Speaking of lock washers, I was unable to get a hold of new ones. I bought some common ones, but they don't fit in very well. Due to their structure not being similar to the shape of cup or cavity down here. So, I using old ones which perfect fit here. When it's placed, it doesn't let the bolt to turn anywhere. So we push the bolt in, trying to locate lid's thread, it's got to be somewhere there. Then we tighten the bolt with a screwdriver. This concludes the lid installation. Here is the thread. There is the first installed return spring, and the rest is now hidden from us. The lid installation is not quite there yet. The hinge pin and split pin are need to install. It's probably best to use split pin with this side. Therefore, we start to insert the hinge pin with this side. Before installation, we grease hinge pin and attempt to insert it. We use a brass hammer in place of steel hammer. They are specifically good to prevent your metal from being thin or marked by the face of the hammer and eliminate work damage. Only a tiny bit more remains. Hinge pin should be able to go in completely. Here. Now pay attention, the hinge pin came out a bit here, and there must be its hole for split pin to enter. Using hammer to help split pin go through. And bend the tines on split pin. Use a rag to clean everything. Finally, test the assembled component, see if everything works as intended by bending it a bit like this. Now, a bit about handbrake pads installation process. Here is a bolt which locks pads to the handbrake pad carrier. We applying some of ceramic grease to the bolt, so it would stay protected from corrosion. Here is the process of installation itself. Insert the bolt. 
Do some space between its head and the surface. Get the pad hooked by sliding it to the bolt head. Coat its thread with the same ceramic grease. Install the lock washer. Finally, tighten the nut. However, you might face a small challenge when tightening it since there is little to no space for a tool to do its job. And the nut comes with a custom size of 8.2 mm, whereas tool's head is 8 mm. I barely managed to hook and screw it. The process repeats itself when preparing the second handbrake pad to the pad carrier. In additionally, you have to make sure you've got the handbrake pads correctly facing. Otherwise you would have to redo it later. So double check it. And so, we have it. The correctly installed handbrake pads from passenger side. Here is the bevel bevel. Here is a brake pads. Here is the differential. The similar installation process undergoes the handbrake pads from driver's side. The handbrake adjusting bolt and retraction fork will be installed later.